Yes, we have a pleasure to receive Grace Penn, who is the BI application uh, architect for Los Angeles Unified School District. Uh, she has a great experience, more than 20 years in building and designing and managing a very big, very large scale data warehouse and analytic projects. So we are happy to receive it. Welcome, Grace. She's going to talk about remote learning solution with COVID-19 through modern visualizations. So it's a very hot topic these days. Um, so one thing that is important, if you are just joining us, uh, you have in the menu of, uh, in the Zoom menu, you have the Q&A uh, button. So please share, uh, put your questions there and not in the chat, please. Okay, so if you put the questions in Q&A, at the end of a great session, we're going to uh, have the possibility that Grace <coughs> answers some of them. Okay, so Grace, welcome to our Tech Guest Day and the audience is yours. All right. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to share uh, my experience about the how we do the remote learning solution with the COVID-19 through the modern visualization. So how we roll out a comprehensive business intelligence application that is business oriented, result oriented, um, data-driven decisions. Let me do the, okay. All right, a little disclaimer about uh, here. It's, I'm here to share my experience. So whatever my comments, it's not represent the LUSD position or endorse any products or techniques. A little bit about myself, um, I'm a, BI architect for LUSD, and I also won the Woman in Technology Scholar 2019 for k -School. I'm regular speaker at K-12 schools. Uh, also, I go to schools career days, uh, attend the Cyber Girls, Girls Who Calls events. A little bit hard bit about me is um, I'm a Vans scuba diver and underwater photographer. So a few picture I was taking uh, during last December when I was in Australia. So those are the sand tiger shark and uh, um, the pajama script and the seahorse. Um, a little bit background about LUSD. Um, most of our people probably know LUSD is the second largest school district in the United States with the biggest elected board, uh, school board member. So it's the community uh, parents and people elected those uh, seven board members and represented seven local district plus the central. And we have about over uh, 690,000 students in the district speak 95 different language and we have almost 80% uh, of the kids actually qualify for free and reduced meal. So a lot of school, 80% of our school district uh, schools, almost like a title one schools. A lot of uh, economic disadvantaged kids with the uh, LUSD. We have about 64,000 full-time employees, and we are serving almost 4.8 million people in the Southern California. School-wise, school we have uh, over 1,300 school in the district and different centers that including about 230 Three are the independent charter schools. Our budget is between 7.5 to $8 billion. So we do cover a lot of areas, uh, 20, city, 20 cities in the Southern California. Okay, during the February, March, uh, the COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak and school district end up have the decision, should we lock down or should we remain it open? 
and we scrambled it. Superintendent tried to weigh all the pros and cons of what works, and because we didn't really prepare, all the kids need to have the iPad, the Chromebook, the computers to log in. They don't. A lot of kids don't even have the Wi-Fi, the internet access, and all this. What we need to do, make the remote learning even possible working. But、uh, the COVID nineteen getting worse, so on March sixteen, superintendent decided to lock down the school district and school closure. Closure and kids work、um, started from home and、uh, employees work from home. So before that lockdown, we try to figure out. Remember, our school district a lot of.、Um, Students, they don't have food. They don't even have food at uh, school. Uh, I mean, at home, and they don't have anything. They don't have the iPad. They don't have the Wi-Fi access. So we actually end up scramble the two fundamental thing we need is the、um, we need to deliver the food to the kids. How we are going to do it? So、um, kids. It's a、uh, spread all across Southern California, right? Twenty six cities plus different area. And so, superintendent want to identify, saying, "Hey, we want to identify what is the biggest parking lot in the our school district area, and we are going to set up the distribute food distribute center. So we identify. So we need to create a parking lot space and need a geo special mapping, and basically need to identify the top sixty parking space." Parking lot space, and that set up the food distribution center all across the Southern California. And also, then another challenge is, hey, kids don't have the computer, kids don't have the Wi-Fi, don't have the MiFi, don't have the internet access. How we are going to do it? So we order a lot of、uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, and we also partner up with.、Um, AT and T, Verizon, T-Mobile, they are all willing to give free Wi-Fi to the kids as long as have LUSD students there. The, their neighborhood, they can have the free Wi-Fi access. So, and also we end up contact a lot of vendors, and they donate the iPad, they donate the Chromebook, they donate. We allocate a lot of、uh, technology,、uh, bond fund stuff into buying.、Uh, A lot of a、uh, device, and then the second challenge is how we're going to keep track all the device delivery. How we can keep track all this、uh, student actually log in and using it. How we can make sure the academic continually for the student student actually continually learning, and how we can make sure all student have the. Equipment to access to the instruction that they need. They can log into the Zoom meeting. They can log in Microsoft Teams. How they can attend、uh, Schoology, Google Classroom, and all this. How can make sure they have the access. Also for the、uh, employees and teachers, we want to make sure keep track how they can participate. Whatever.、Um, The class or the、uh, professional development they need to do, and we also want to see the student actually making progress during this remote learning COVID nineteen time period. So we, so this all these questions and in superintendents and superintendent office,、uh, those people personnel's head saying, hey, how we can track. The completion of the professional development for the staff. How we can check all the home assignments and the task completion, and we want to have a dashboard and view the status of the device and the hotspot dis distribution. And we want to look at the student by the subgroup, right? By the ethnicity, by the gender, by the grade. So. We want to see what percentage is student、um, locking by different su student subgroup. 
And we also want to monitoring the student actually locking the device, actually what material um, coursework they are doing. What kind of assignment, are they turning the assignment? Are they taking the assessment test? So we want to monitor all the locking information and we want to monitor the student engagements. And so we also want to have the feedback, the confirmation of the student actually making progress during the time they actually study at home. And we also want to identify any student actually need extra support. See, at the beginning we realized a lot of, finally we distributed the device to the schools and then why the student not locking in, we are kind of curious. Then we realized a lot of them actually don't have the internet access, even though they have the device, but they cannot have the internet access. They cannot access all the coursework or the online learning material they need to uh, access to, to in order for them to continue their academic uh, studying. So, um, Superintendent won this um, basically remote learning dashboard project, quickly deploy it. So the timeline is everything is right now and they need it yesterday. And the deployment, the requirements say, hey, we want it next week. So we're kind of like, okay, the best promise we can give it's two weeks because not just, uh, because we keep in mind, we don't have all this data. All this data, it's a scatter all over the place in different department, different group, in the Excel, in the local assets, in the local uh, different data storage. So we need to contact with them. We need to look at the data. We need to say, hey, what makes sense and how to integrate this, all this different data together in one piece and actually makes sense. And keep in mind, a lot of itself checking the data is updated every hour and it's a lot of uh, human errors and data entry mistakes and the key in the student information, the wrong name. It's how you can even join the data together. And it's very, very challenging with the tight timeline and especially they want to see this in a couple weeks. So luckily we actually my team, we work on the whole child project for more than a year now. So we do luckily have the good foundation of the data in integration data already in our enterprise data warehouse, which is we collected almost like a 97 different data source from all over the place. Not just the student information system, we collected all the HR, the employee information, we collect the ISTAR, the misconducts, we collect all the different geospatial mapping, we collect all different third party vendors, um, all the assessment data like Navians, Schoology, and Clevers, and Ingenuity, and APES Learning. So we already have pretty well rich information in our enterprise data warehouse. So that's why we can even remotely can deliver this in two weeks. Quickly, we can <clears throat> even just based on the student, like uh, the login, uh, their email address, and we need to go back to our data warehouse, find all the student demographic data. So because we have pretty well established data enterprise data warehouse, so as long as we can establish one link, we can quickly just link everything together. So. <clears throat> So you can see uh, a little screenshot here. It's um, we actually developed several um, dashboards. So we have the people and device dashboard. So we have the order student information uh, there. We have the access management system there, uh, integrate those data there. And we also have the student parents teacher survey, the feedback saying, hey, actually the student logging in or using the data or not. And also, we have the screen, uh, the dashboard report, it's the stuff and student login. So we want to check the, it's the teacher login. It's the teacher using the Zoom, actually hosting the meeting and give the course, uh, the curriculum and have the class virtually with the student. 
and we want to see all other platform they're using, like say Microsoft Teams or uh, Google Classroom, or they're using Schoology, and we want to keep track of all the network traffic, all the network traffic logs. We want to see, hey, where is the bandwidth? Do we have enough bandwidth for a certain location? Where's the condensed area where it's a lighter area? And also the instructional application usage, like under Clever, uh, the EdTech, we have so many application underneath it. We have the little uh, different benchmark, Illuminate, Achieve 3000, and all these different application <clears throat> under uh, Clever. So are they using that platform? Are they taking the assessment? Are they using different applications? So we want to see all the digital curriculum, actually um, what class, uh, what platform they use more and how the student using it. So we want to know all this information. And the last part is like a student learning and their uh, progress monitoring. So we want to see all the LMX um, learning management system like a, uh, for us it will be the Schoology is the big one and then the Google Classroom, a lot of uh, school and student actually using it. And also all the assessment platform, we want to uh, lay it out, rank it saying, hey, how many students using the Schoology, how many students actually using the ingenuity, and then we find out actually a lot of uh, uh, students and the teachers using the Class Dojo app. So all this information we want to collect it and make sense of it and how we can extract them, become the useful information and become the data-driven decision for superintendent or all the administrator or even the just local local district uh, superintendent and the uh, principals making the decisions how we can coordinate and make sure everybody have the equal opportunity access online and can do the remote learning at home. So we also work on trying to get the survey from the uh, from the feedback from the teachers, from the students, from the parents, from the community. So we want to see how the learning progress for all the students. So whole child project is basically it's a student centered learning platform. So it's all focused on what 360 degree we can cover the students. And it cover K to 12 and also even the uh, adult students. So we want to see the connectivity, the what the needs they are and also the social emotional development. Like is this some student not locking in why they are not doing homework, can we send out, generate alert and notification to the students, to the parents, to the principals? So it's like an action driven notification and alert to the people that they can take the action and take care of the student and take care of the kids. So um, a little screenshot about the people and device. So we have implemented with the geospatial map. So it's like the heat map. So you can see the area where the device more contents are distributed, where it's the hotspot deployment. So it can break it down to the detail. So it's the report is actually doable to can see more detail the how the student uh, using the device, do they get the device do they have the Wi-Fi? And we can filter it by the student groups, by their ethnicity, by their grade, by their uh, genders, and all this information can be break down. And we want to see where's the low internet availability. So when we have this information, we can go back to talk to AT&T, go back to talk to Verizon and see they can help and T-Mobile. So keep in mind, we cannot just open up the, when I was in the AT&T meeting, we cannot just open it up saying, hey, have the free Wi-Fi or free internet access. Because remember, we are dealing with the kids under, most of the kids is under 18. So we need to have some sort of uh, 
parental kind of control access. So we need to, the admin portal, you need to control saying, hey, they, all, they cannot access, for example, the porn side, the violence side, and all this uh, internet out there. So we need to limit it, the um, access, need to be the kids friendly. So all these things we need to identify and lock down. It's very tedious work too, and you need to lock down and define all these details. So um, we also monitor all the teachers' um, professional developments and see all their progress over time. So just a lot of a wealth of information need to keep track and need to make sense and one to understand what information we extract, what question we try to answer, what problem we try to solve. So we always driven by that saying, hey, what business problem we try to solve, what question we try to answer, how we can help the students do better when they are during this COVID-19 and have the solution actually make sense to everybody uh, to work on it to to actually can continue their academic learning during uh, the lockdown. So um, we also build the usage analytics. Basically, it's uh, checking the login information every day. So we have the daily refresh data coming in. So we load the data every night. So the data uh, check all the login information for the students and the stuff. So it could be very various things like the EdTech logins, the LMS, the learning management system login, how they respond to the tags and emails, uh, all the online meetings and activities, how they participate the class and all this information, it's doable. And also all the conference they attend, all the external curriculum materials they're using. Are they using the YouTube? Are they using the Khan Academy? Are they using the Coursera? All this information, all the tracks and all the discussion boards. So just a lot of information you need to keep track of. And also we want to have the train analytics and the time period like over the week. Is the student, lock, more student lock in or uh, more staff and student lock in using the device and more students participate and engage. So we want to have the train analytic week by week. We want to see it's making the progress, it's making the continued improvement on that. And also checking emails, it's are they opening, checking the lock, lock in for household. So we realize sometimes there are several kids live in one the same household, especially we have a lot of uh, like a uh, homeless um, also the the kids actually it's a foster kids, so they have lived in the same household, so maybe just uh, one internet access for the whole household instead we don't need multiple, but then at the same time they do need everybody need to have their own device, their own laptop or iPad or locking device to access the internet. So how we can, um, we constantly evaluate saying, hey, how we can uh, develop this efficiency procedures to call and contact students and stuff. So who is not locking in, how, what's the roadblock, what's the problem they encounter. So all this information, we constantly try to uh, search that. And also the instructional application usage, we will see all the usage like uh, at a glance, checking at a glance so you can see all the product under different application, how they use it, see how many time, uh, what's the time student actually spend on each applications and which material, external curriculum material and digital contents actually student like to go to or use it, why it's more efficiency for them and we want to check all the distribution and receive, are they receiving all the coursework? Are they receiving all the assignments? Are they turning the assignments? And we want to see all the participation, online meetings and digital content and all these things. So um, checking assignments and coursework, it's, it's very challenging and 
because it's so tedious and many details we need to keep track of and we want to see what information actually makes sense what's the uh, we want to monitor the work efforts like the google items viewed it and created and how many assignments has been completed submitted and completed what all the usage about the edtech products and participation in discussions and checking their grade by subject area so it's like a, almost like rubik's cube in many ways and slice it and dice it how to cube it and measure the progress against this all this learning outcomes that students need to have so um i don't know i have enough time to do the uh, probably i don't have enough time to do the uh, demo so maybe i put this at the end if we have more time yeah, uh, yeah that, would, that would be good yeah yeah so let me just uh, sk skip it to the the technical part so uh, what's coming next so we still focus on the co college and career readiness and social emotion support so and then the at the end of the day we try to focus on the personalized uh, individual educational program and personalized blended learning experience for all the students. So when we develop this, it's on the front, it looks simple, just like superintendent and all this uh, admin and strategy officers saying, hey, I don't care how I get the data, just make it easy and make it easy for me to access and get the information right at the fingertips. So it's when we try to achieve such outcome behind the scenes, it's so many things involved, right? The security, data engineering, and data visualization. How do we make sure the performance is there? The data modeling designed and just a lot of things continue integrated more data into the platform. So this is the um, basic our uh, walk through the logical data movement. So we have the abstract layers. So we have a uh, different in, internal data source, and then we have the outside data source. And so we build the functional data mart. So we put the data in the abstract layer, and then we build the functional data mart, and then we build the basic information layer data warehouse, and have the all the historical longitudinal uh, data warehouse. And also we have uh, different big data distribution and um, discovery sandbox and how we enrich it. So, so from here, so first layer is the abstract layer and the second layer will be relational information foundational layer. So we build all this uh, foundation data marks and using the ODI, we're using the uh, Oracle Golden Gate, the big data and all this information. And then from there, we try to work on, actually this is in the POC stage, like doing the Kafka streaming analytic. So we want to see, hey, the data actually can streaming that will be more efficient for the, whoever the decision maker want to make actionable decision and distribute the information, I mean the device and the, coursework to the student on time instead need to wait a day because right now it's a uh, time lag there. So this is the overall reference architectures. Basically we have all the metadata layers so from the data source and then we have the abstract layer uh, data integration layer and then we have the abstract layer build a foundation layer data warehouse and we have the um, uh, functional data mark for each subject area. We build different KPI, pre-aggregate and build a cube for each uh, subject area, try to solve certain area, certain type of uh, problems related to that. And then we also using uh, Oracle in memory. So that's try to enhance the performance. And we also adopt it, uh, vendors um, enrich the uh, framework. So in this case, we actually partner with the Inknife using the uh, enrich the framework to doing the user better user experience and better data visualization 
for the analytic reports. So um, I think I'm kind of short on time. So this is uh, basically the layers uh, break it down in details. So from the sync, uh, from the different source of the data integrated and in one abstract layers, and then we build into the basic EDW, and we have all this. Uh, business rule applied to it, the transformation happening, and then from there we build a KPI analytic layer and have different uh, data marks and build different functional data mark and then we go to the presentation layer, have the enrich um, data visualization. So we actually spend a lot of time and luckily we have the team actually have the offshore team so we end up pretty much work 24-7 uh, three team have the handshake uh, between eight hours uh, gap and then so it, it works out pretty well so that's how we it can even remotely can put it off in two weeks and Oracle database is a complex but it can support multiple workloads and we try to see how we man how many jobs we can actually go parallel remember we have huge Every data is a huge amount of data set, right? Like attendance, it's a, over 180 million records just for one year. And each student have a seven periods attended, uh, attendance and then they have so many course. And just if you do the math, it's just huge amount of the data we need to deal with and how we can make it sim simpler and how can we support and just answer the question that one question in superintendent mind right how to make sure the student still can continue learning and so um, eventually we are looking for because right now we are mainly it's on premises the uh, hardware and we are looking for do uh, go to the cloud so that's the our next phrase and so separate the computing the business and the storage and the, actually the infrastructure that we don't need to worry about this then we will more focus a completed user experience for the students and the teachers and admins stuff using the our platform so this is a little bit high level conceptual architecture that we use i think i have a slide um just the LUSD one so so we have a we all very rich of the data lakes how we support the seamless data drift drifting through our system and get the information out to the end users and so we try to do the streaming uh, using the stream set uh, we are using the stream set uh, pulling the zoom meeting like uh, how many students participate in the zoom class how uh, how many a teacher logging into the zoom meetings and facilitate a, a class using the zoom so we're pulling all this uh zoom data and also the google classroom data how many students and teacher using the google class using attending the google classroom so all this uh, information so it stream set it's a pipeline right so it has all this um uh, transformation going through and create that information layer of the data that we need Another thing, uh, because uh, very intense engineering work uh, for the ETLs, so we are looking on the new product like uh, the fine chain, and I think I'm short on time. I just run this very quick. Um, so fine chain will be basically it's no schema change and no schema migration and also uh, failure recovery and incremental load. So all this will be taken care of uh, without. So it will be all streamlined, pulling the data from the source and audit will be complete and data cleansing will be within the uh, fight chain and all this validation will be a smooth transition, seamless to the developers and we actually will be ma much faster and efficient to make the whole transformation uh, more efficient and store the data in the data warehouse. So this is the 
architecture of the LUSD I was talking about earlier. So from the source system, we stream set and we try to use uh, adopt the fine train and using the Kafka, using the data lake. So how we can actually store the data in our Oracle Enterprise Data Warehouse in our relational data stores. And also we have the whole child, the front end actually in order for the performance because we have huge amount of data set, we're actually using the Elasticsearch and so there's a NoSQL index and so how to make it more efficient and go through the framework using the, uh, in this case, we're using the inline framework. So it's a JavaScript, we have more enriched information. And so this is just a um, little comparison between the relation relational uh, traditional model and then Apache Kafka that we want to say, hey, schema on the right or schema on the read. So all this uh, information. So, um, okay, I think I, I, think, I think we have a, Okay. Thank you so much, Grace. Uh, I, I think we have a, a few questions. Okay. Uh, so uh, there's one that says, do we have a solution architect for this use case? I think that you just shown the solution architect. I don't know if you want to, to, to explain a little bit more. Uh, yes, uh, we do have a solution architect. We, um, right now our main vendor is in knife. So we do have a um, partner with the industrial expert, expert from the field. So, we partner, we design the data warehouse, the whole architecture together. They, they actually pull in more people from outside, whoever it's the well-known uh, industry architect and we partner together and design all these uh, different layers and what makes sense. And it's customized to uh, Yahoo USD too because um, we want to have our, our unique, LUSD is a very complicated case. Um, for a lot of reasons. Any special case we encounter, it's within the LUSD. So, so they adopt the special case, they think of, the, okay, what is the best practice in the industry and how can customize to fit into the LUSD. So we do have the um, solution architect in this case. Okay, perfect. Um, so we have uh, a few more questions. One that asks uh, from anonymous attendee, can you describe the underlying technology stack for the solution? I think you already showed the, the slide, specifically the K12-360. Oh, K12-360, um, that's, um, I think it's a inline product. Um, we customize it to become the LSD whole trial. Um, basically will help the student uh, like I said, it's a, it takes a village to raise the kids, right? So how we can cover the student 360, not just the academic, we also cover how the uh, after school programs, the beyond the bell, and also extracurriculum, how the uh, social emotional engage. So K-12-360, it's a in-life product. They actually uh, have this, the same concept. It's how we can cover the student 360 degree and make sure um, all the dashboard report, all the alert and notification we generated is try to raise this kid be better. So that it's, uh, uh, I think that it's, if particularly the K-1260, I think it's uh, in life uh, brand, it, it's their product. Okay. Um and so which data warehousing tool do you use? Uh, Therese Condit said that. Uh, I think you're using the Oracle database for the data warehouse? Yes, yes. So we, are, we have the full, full stack of the Oracle Foundation Suite. So from the Oracle uh, ODIs, the uh, Oracle OBIE, uh, the, whole in, the whole enchilada basically end to end. And oh, then- the tune, right? Yes, and then we also on top of it, we're using Elasticsearch, we're using um, InLife uh, UI framework, and so it's a lot of uh, things engaged. So we are Oracle shop for many, many, many years, actually 20 years. 
Great. Um, I, I don't think that we will have time for more questions. One thing that we can do, uh, and Kerry, correct me if I'm wrong, we can send you the, the, the few questions that we have, one about privacy concerns with the network login process, and another about using OMM uh, uh, 12C to metadata governments, if you're using Oracle Enterprise Metadata Management 12C. Um, mm -hmm. So we are out of time right now, guys. Um, so let's, I, I, I will do that. So I, we, we're going to send you the questions and to, well, to yeah. continue. So, so for those, yeah, just real for those quick, who uh, have submitted questions. Okay, just Sorry, real quick about the uh, data privacy. So we, this is the top priority for us because it's all the kids, it's a younger kids. So we have a very heavy law, HIPAA law and all kinds of law to restrain it. So our system, it's not open to the public. So it's a heavily role-based security, role-based need to know basis. So a teacher only see their uh, students information, principal only see their school information and the local district soup, they only see their local district. So on, not everybody can see everybody. Even our board member, they cannot see by law, they cannot see the detailed student information. Mm -hmm. So we block them. They can see the aggregate information, summative information, but they cannot see the detailed student information. And we protect the student very well. If the student, certain category is if they're less than like a, a 10 people, we don't identify them. So we make it un identifiable. So that group will not be showing. So it's very heavily guarded on that when it comes to the data security and, and what we're showing to people and what we share with others. Perfect, perfect. Grace, thank you so much. This was so much interesting and uh, it was very useful and it was, you know, it's, it's, it's a topic that it's, it's affected all of us, this pandemic. So thank you so much for your presentation. It was great. And uh, so then uh, if you want to share some 